This is the Mobile Tech Podcast, brought to you by worldpodcasts.com. Now here's your host, tech girl, Miriam Joie. Brought to you by Mint Mobile. Stay tuned for a special offer at the end of the show. Hi, and welcome to the Mobile Tech Podcast. I'm your host, Miriam Joie, and today is Thursday, March 16th, 2023, and I have Will here of Android Police. Hi, Will. How are you? I'm good, Miriam. How are you? Fantastic. I just flew back from Germany like a couple of hours ago I landed, so, you know, this could go in any kind of direction (laughs) at this point. Last week, we had an entire tangent on how to make sandwiches. So I'm just warning you. Okay. Like, this is okay. this could happen. I made a sandwich today. I prepped. I'm good. I'll, we you, can talk about good. it. Well, I, don't, I think <laughs> we're going to try to have a tangent about something else in sandwiches yeah, I know, this time. I know. That's fair. But uh, yeah, look, it's been a week of uh, lots of pixel leaks. So we're going to talk about yeah. that. And yeah. there is some other little things that are interesting. There was a whole galaxy, you know, moon gate mm-hmm. kind of... I guess, came up again in some weird way. Yeah. And I'd love to chat with you about that and get your thoughts. And then, you know, there's a bunch of other little items in there, here and there. So let's get started with the Pixel stuff. You covered it, obviously, extensively for Android Police. And I'm kind of wondering if we maybe can start with a fold, because I think that's what people are most excited about, no? That's what I'm most excited about. Yeah. So, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, um, I I don't know. Going into this week, I don't know if I thought it was going to be such a heavy pixel leak week but like every single like tuesday wednesday thursday like there's been something to to write about it's just which is good but yeah it's it's we finally hit that point where it's just it's gonna come you know (laughs) a couple times a week we're gonna get some kind of some kind of pixel leak you know on the on the same flight that i was just mentioning 12 hour flight and i'm like i need to send you the topics so the first thing i did on the internet (laughs) after we took off is send you the topics and i i went to your you know to, to Android police to sure. see what you'd written about. And I'm like, holy crap, Will's had a really busy week talking about <laughs> yeah. pixel stuff. Like, yeah. <laughs> wow. It's, yeah, I I um I took over as as um I mean I guess not took over it was, it's a newly created title but last August they were like hey your phone's editor now and I was like okay cool what does that mean it's like well when there's phone news you'll cover it and I was like okay perfect I'm already doing that so yeah any all these all these pixel leaks I just grab them and run you know oh great yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're doing a fantastic job you know I did that job at Engadget years ago yeah. so I can relate but let's uh, talk about what we know about the fold there's What's leaked this time and uh, how does it matter? Yeah, so so obviously the fold has been, you know, in the rumor sphere for like, God, at least a, at least a year, probably coming up on two years. Um, this is uh, this is kind of our first uh, it was it was kind of a, a dual leak and it was our first uh, hint at like a real release window for the device. I think we've all kind of been operating under the assumption of like Google I.O. is May 10th. And, you know, we're, we're going to see a Pixel 7a there almost assuredly. Are, are we going to see, you know, Pixel Fold there either a tease or like a full-blown announcement, you know? Um, and yeah. I, it, it's looking probably more like an announcement at this point because the rumor this week is that we're looking at like a mid-June uh, uh, release window for both uh, the Fold and the 7a, uh, which is three months away. Like, it's very, very soon, so... Yeah, I'm I'm super excited actually. You know, it's funny. I had C. Scott Brown last week on the show from Android Authority, and we were kind of speculating whether this would be like last year, where they just dropped everything on us, no yeah. more leaks, no more secrets. Yeah. And then you know we got the six A in the summer. Yeah. So I kind of feel that's where we're going. Although I remember the old days when like um, the three A and three A XL came out. They they were like, you know, they announced them on stage right there that day. And then later in that day in the journalist area, they started distributing the phones. And it was a mad rush for everyone because there's no embargo, right? So we're all trying to right. do hands-ons and first impressions. <laughs> and honestly, as much as that was exciting, I yeah. kind of don't want that. I'm I'm actually more excited about this rumor kind of saying June-ish because yeah. that means we're probably going to get a ton of info at IO from them, at least enough to keep us satiated. And then we can focus on actually doing it properly. 
Yeah, you know, I, I agree. As the person at Android Police who's going to have to, you know, be at I.O. and then do eventually do these hands on. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, let's space it out a little bit. Give me a, a chance to actually, you know, sit down and write. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I will be there. So hopefully we can catch up. Yeah, 100 percent. Cool. So anything else? Yeah, I, I, I think the other, so I said dual leak, uh, uh, the next day, um, we had a, a, a leak kind of a, so, so the original like June retail, uh, uh, leak, or I should say it came from like a retail, like information dump. Right. And so like, right. that's kind of how we're gaining this. That's how we know. Um, we're only seeing one skew of 256 gigabytes. I, I, I doubt that's the only like storage uh, you know, tier that we're going to see for, for, um, the fold, just, it, it's such a high end device for Google that I would be surprised if they limited it to just, uh, 250, 250. Okay. So you gigabytes. want 512 as well or yeah. something. Yeah. 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 I, I would be surprised if there wasn't that even, it just wasn't in the retail system yet. Um, we didn't see a price, uh, in that initial, uh, leak, which I think a lot of people, you know, understandably are, curious about because foldables uh are expensive we've seen some more affordable ones launch you know in china and europe but in the u.s it's really just the you know the fold and the flip from samsung and those are you know especially the fold is is eighteen hundred dollars and i think earlier leaks for the pixel fold have been like oh it's also going to be seventeen eighteen hundred dollars and and uh so the the price leak that happened on wednesday was that it's looking more like 1300 and to 1500 dollars mm. like in that range which is like way more affordable like it's not it's still expensive it's it'll be yeah, the most expensive better. pixel yeah exactly it's way more it's affordable competitive and yes considering that's the only folding phone we're gonna get in exactly. north america that's not you know a flip phone yeah. from samsung and and it's you know the only other option being the fold from samsung i think that's great news yeah i do too i think it'll help eventually push samsung's prices down because that has really been the issue is that samsung has had no competition like stateside like there's no drive to like lower the price in any way or or really even i mean really even change the design you know we've seen every single other foldable from every <laughs> other company yeah. has has like a flat like it, it folds flat right and you're still i have i don't even know where it is the fold for it still has the like gap in the middle and it's like but the rumor is they're getting rid of it this yeah, year. Like, yeah, yeah. There was on, another guys. rumor. I didn't yeah. uh, want to dive into these rumors too much <laughs> because mostly I was just like so many Galaxy rumors and we have oh a lot God. to talk about. But yes, now that we're mentioning it, we might as well just say it. Yeah, there are rumors that both the Flip and the Fold 5 are going to fold flat this coming yeah, up this year. That's all and I want. <laughs> there's also rumors that the Fold 5 is going to inherit essentially the same 50 megapixel main sensor as the current Fold 4. So, yeah. you know, I wasn't expecting there we'd go to 200 myself, but maybe 108, but it's a Z-depth yeah. issue, right? Like you're trying to make a thin phone and the camera bump can only be so big, right? Yeah, they're they're just, you know, for the foreseeable future, it's just the, the Z-series phones are just going to be, you know, not really focused on on, on camera quality. Yeah. It's not that they're terrible, but they're, they're not going to be, you know, the Galaxy S series. Yeah. No, yeah. no. Yeah. But at the same time, we've seen some Chinese makers come very close, right? Yeah. Oh, and, 100%. And so we know it's potentially possible. And, you know, maybe Samsung will, you know, deem us worthy one day to make a phone like that for the West. I, I'm a little annoyed with the fact that, you know, they seem to be cruising along a little bit in terms of, you know, the hinge design and stuff. Yeah. Like, don't get me wrong, the Fold and the Flip are great phones, but, you know, I've yeah. got the Oppo Find N2 Flip here, and while it lacks wireless charging and OIS, they're the two things that will really ding it on because I love wireless charging, and I think OIS is critical when you have a camera that's branded Hasselblad, okay? <laughs> um, even though I know you could technically with modern algorithms get away without OIS, but eh, that's just rubbing me the wrong way. So, yeah. you know, other than those two things, that phone is super awesome, like super awesome. Now it's come to the West, but yeah. it's not come to the US, so. Right, exactly. You know? It's, it's um, I mean, that was the best thing about being at Mobile World Congress a couple of weeks ago was, you know, like the Android market in the US where, where I'm focused on is, is right. so dry for choice. And then you go, 
uh, to Spain and it's like there are so many options and so many interesting smartphones that will never see, you know, space on a store shelf in, in the US. And it's it's such a bummer because like I want to try out these phones for more than a couple minutes. I want to use them as like a daily driver. And unless I <laughs> import them, like it's not happening. Yeah, so. like the uh, like the Techno, right? For exactly. Example. Exactly. Um, which is pushing or even the Honor, down. right? The VS. Yeah. But, you know, uh, that's all uh, seems to be the way it is. We're just not going to yeah. win. We're not going to get these phones. And it's a bummer. And honestly, I'm a little worried right now because um, we might as well just squeeze it in here <laughs> as yeah. a piece of news. But the Oppo Find X6 Pro, yeah. uh, which is a flagship from Oppo, which is an incredible camera phone this year based on the rumors, um, supposedly is not going to come to the West. Yeah. And that's weird because every find before that has, at least in Europe, which is what I was expecting, because all the previous ones were. Right. And and that's a, that's a piece of news that's coming across. Okay, like, it's not confirmed, but we're going to find out on March 21st. So very soon yeah, is when, um, you know, and I can't really speak too much more about things, but I do have some information and I'll have to share it with you in due time. <laughs> and it's, it's a baller, bonker, awesome phone. So like real bummer. And, you know, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't understand this. I, I feel like it's getting worse. You know, it's, it's like yeah. we're getting less choices, yeah. especially for the Europeans who were getting a lot of choices. And, I'm, you know, I'm seeing more and more people signing contracts in Europe again because the prices are so high they can't afford the phones. Right. And uh, we're going back to a duopoly probably. Maybe not for them, but maybe they'll have less choices. Yeah. I, and I, that's... I, I... Oh, it's it's such a bummer. It's 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 so like it, it it's such a like U.S. problem right now. And like to watch Europe kind of go through go through the same thing. And and like to that end, like you know, this is one of uh the the Find X Six Pro is rumored uh, to be you know um one of the like smartphones that is shipping with Sony's IMX nine eighty nine one inch yeah. sensor, uh, which I can't get on a phone in the U S right now, again, unless I import it, but like it's on a few phones already. And, and I know, um, former Android police editor in chief, Daniel Bader, we, who co-hosts the Android police podcast with me. He was talking about it last week. I, I uh, uh, the, the vivo phone that has it on there. I can't remember. Yeah. The one. X 90 pro yes. plus and X 90 yes. pro non plus as well. Yeah. And then there, there's the Xiaomi 13 pro, which I have exactly, here, which Manuel has, uh, and then the uh, at Android police. Yeah. 12 S ultra from last year yes and there's rumors of a xiaomi 13 ultra that will also have this sensor that will also be coming to europe this one so that's and exciting I, yeah I, it's imp it's really impressive like the shots you can get are really impressive and i want to use it <laughs> and i can't unless again i import and it's it's just like i i assume it will eventually land on a phone in the u.s but to like watch it um to watch it essentially make the rounds, right? Like every every other region in the world has like access to a smartphone that has the sensor, and like I'm just jealously looking in. From yeah, the we're kind of stuck with the OnePlus 11 exactly. 5G as our best BBK group phone in North America, exactly. which isn't a bad phone by any no. means, but no wireless charging, you know, no yeah. real telephoto. Um, yeah, and when you consider the the Find X5 Pro was sold in Europe with the Snapdragon chip. And they got a lesser Find X5 Pro in China. Optionally, there was a Dimensity Edition, which yeah. had a Dimensity 9000 and had a slightly different camera system. Same sensor, but unlike the main Find X5 Pro last year, which had both OIS and sensor shift, right? It did some of its um, shake correction using the lens and some using the the sensor so it was moving the sensor in the xy position but any rotational uh corrections were done by the lens it was a really interesting hybrid combo and yeah. it provides some extremely stable video in particular almost as good as those gimbal phones um that uh, vivo used to do the previous right. X series but you know the dimensity edition in china did not have that uh mechanism it had regular ois on the same sensor and it didn't have the mary silicon x chip and as such it didn't have the hasselblad branding yeah. in china which is really strange that now they're going to get the whole enchilada as it were which <laughs> we you expect to be a snapdragon yeah. 8 gen 2 yes. right so 
Yeah, I don't know. I'm a little puzzled by what's going on here with the Chinese manufacturers. I, I, I'm like, you know, what's going on? Like, just give us the goods. Like, don't yeah. you want to get your best phones in the hands of most of the people in the world out there? I don't know. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping, at least in the case of the Find X6 Pro, that it's a temporary region exclusive and we see it in a couple months. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping yeah. they change their minds or yeah. and that these rumors are you know, just part of the story, basically. Exactly. But yeah. And so, you know, the rumors, there's uh, Ice Universe posted a photo. It looks like there's a folded periscope lens. Yeah. And of course, that crazy sensor. We're looking at, as I said, an 8th Gen 2. And, you know, 100 watt wire charging and 50 watt wireless, apparently. Um, stuff like that. So it's, you know, pretty good. It's and it looks like a beast. Exciting. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, I've been always been a big fan of the X series, the Find yeah. X series. So I'd be a bummer if we can't get it, uh, at least through, you know, like the normal channels. Because, you know, yeah. I'd rather it be with GMS pre-installed, even though exactly. we can install on the Chinese phones. You can't change the launcher on the Chinese phones. There's a bunch of things you can't do. Yeah. So anyway, back to the pixels. Yeah. Let's talk about the next one on the list, which is the 7A, which I think is probably going to be the same deal. We're going to have it announced at IO and then you, it's going to be what June as well, probably. Right. Yeah. They're, they're saying same mid June, uh, window. Now that, that pricing leak that I was talking about also kind of specified that it looks like 7A would be a, a, you know, worldwide launch as, as far as the That's countries exciting. That Google all, all, well, well, as far as the country's Google supports, right? Like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, like up to their current standards, because obviously they've added countries with every or basically every Pixel launch, and so, so it's it's um, the the Pixel Seven was the most right, like uh, uh, broadly available smartphone. It came back to India, or was it, I think that was a six A first, but whatever. It came back first flagship back in India, um, um, stuff like that, and so I would expect the Seven A to kind of follow. The sevens lead on that. Um, the fold may be more of a region specific thing. Like it might only launch in a few uh, territories at, to start. I don't know, but it's kind of a bummer that Google is still so like insular. But yeah, the the seven A uh, we're looking at mid June. Uh, it's very it's very similar to a Pixel Seven. Um, like, like yeah, is, it's rumored yeah. to have wireless charging, isn't it? Yeah, the rumor is is like I think it's five five watt, watt which charging. is you know, very basic. It's, it's very slow, it, but it is there. You know, um, we're looking at uh, probably finally a ninety hertz, you know, ten eighty p display on it, which is great. Like that was kind of the big the you know sticking point with the six a. Um, it's got. Like, I mean, from the back, like you, you would not know that it was, uh, we, we've, we've seen even today, actually, that was the, that was the leak today, oh. uh, is that <laughs> someone listed it on eBay. Someone listed a prototype on oh, eBay. Jesus. How does Google mess that up so bad? I don't bad know. This year. is the second year in a row. Cause the pixel seven went on eBay last May. Um, and, and same, same story. It was up for a couple hours. It got a bunch of bids. It suddenly disappeared. Because Google probably was like, yeah, no, you're not selling a, a prototype. <laughs> oh, and uh, it couldn't even boot. It was it got up to twenty six hundred dollars. It couldn't even it was stuck in fast boot mode. So like, I don't know if that's worth twenty six hundred dollars, but uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. So we've we've seen it in person as, as far as like, you know, real world leaks. Like it looks like a Pixel 7. Um, it's still kind of got the chunkier bezels of like the the six series. I would say that's right. kind of. But but I mean, there's still we're looking at four fifty to five hundred dollar range. I would guess still, I would huh? guess they keep it four fifty for another wow. year. Wow, uh, it's gonna be a killer phone. It's, it's great, and like you're looking at you know the the six A dropped to two fifty this week on sale. Yeah, right. Like, I like saw the that, sales yeah. for these phones are insane. <laughs> like the six A at had three hundred dollars <laughs> is an insane steal. So yeah, these these are gonna be great. Um, Tensor G two, I'm really excited to try it, even though it's gonna be it's going to be weird reviewing it after using the seven and the seven pro. Cause I'm just going to be like, yeah, it's basically the same experience, a little worse. It's cheaper. It's, it's a little smaller. Like that's, I can already, <laughs> I can already see my I review. I love how we can sometimes write our reviews just on these things. Like I'm the same way. Like sometimes people ask me like, yeah, so you know, what do you think? And I'm like, I'm going to give you a 10 second review, which will be <laughs> all you need to know. And it's, yeah. 
it's like sad that we have to do that, but at the same time, it also speaks to how good the phone is. Yeah. And well, and I will still find a way to write 4,000 words on it. Like, it will, well, I yeah. know me. Yeah. That's I will our job, still find it. Right. A way. I mean, <laughs> yeah. So, any idea whether it's going to keep the metal frame and whether it's going to be a plastic back or a glass back? I, I believe we're looking at glass, but I, I, that one I'm not sure on. I would, I would guess glass just because wireless charging it doesn't well it usually, was plastic last year and it could be plastic for wireless charging it could it could be i i i don't it think it was a very nice a plastic last year yeah it was it's it's it, to be honest like it at, didn't at least, offend me and i'm easily yeah. offended by these things <laughs> <laughs> um no i i i don't think we've seen a leak a, as to like whether it's because that's that was part of the issue last year is that like a lot of people were like yeah i think it's glass and then it ended up being that like kind of nice plastic and you're like i glass can't tell the difference yeah, yeah exactly. because you know the exactly. phones are made by samsung basically yeah. i mean, they're not but they're mostly samsung parts now yeah and then we have a, a rumor of a 64 megapixel main sensor right Oh gosh, there are so many rumors. Yes, uh, 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 an IMX uh, seven eight seven. Ladies and Sony. gentlemen, Mr. Will Saddleberg, right here, stumped by <laughs> the amount of pixel leaks. It has been. I I had a. It's it's actually sitting on my desk. I have a to do list that is like fifteen things long, and it's just been pushing it like back and back every single day because I'm like, there's new pixel leak. That's that's another hour gone. Like. I have to go write this and and then update our hub. And yeah, it's just this week has been crazy. It's the floodgates have broken open. So yes, a uh, uh, Sony IMX 787 is the uh, is the rumor. That's a new one. I don't think I've heard of this one I think yet. that's that would be for the 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 uh, uh, telephoto or for the telephoto. Where did I? It doesn't have a telephoto. It doesn't have a telephoto. What am I reading right now? I got to update our hub. I think hub. you mean the main sensor. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, I, although it might be a GN1 for the main sensor. Yeah, I'd be surprised P- to see a Sony six. sensor yeah. now because because they've gone all Samsung, right? With their partnership. Yeah. Uh, which does bum me a little bit because I still prefer the Sony sensors. But oh well, you know, I think they'll make it work. Like I, a lot of people are like, well, why don't they use the 50? Probably a yeah. price thing. I mean, I hope they retain the OIS. That's all I'm asking. You've you've highlighted an error in my hub, and now I have to go <gasps> fix it after this podcast. Oh recording. my god, I'm making more work for you. Jeez. Oh god, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. I'm not not infallible on this. It's okay. <laughs> By the time this podcast uh, is published, it'll be fixed. There we go. You so don't no one will ever guilty. know. Nobody uh... will ever know <laughs> until they discover it in the next uh, th- like thirty minutes. Yeah, or they they load up a a web a, a, a web archive of it, and they're like, "It's right there, I see it." Oh, oh you know. nah, they won't do that to you. They won't do that to you. <laughs> they're gonna tweet it at me. They're gonna be like, yeah, "I found it." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, anything else we uh, know about the Pixel Seven A that uh, you think is worth it? I I mean, it's just it really is just gonna be. Yeah. A slightly smaller, cheaper Pixel Seven. You know, it's so what it's, are they which is exciting. The but, like that's yeah. the question, right? Yeah. I so like, so that's the third, I guess. Uh, yeah, the eight and eight Pro leaks. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, which is, I I think we've been you know kind of waiting and being like, when is this, when are we finally going to see what these phones look like? And the answer is that they look fairly similar to to the seven in the seven Pro, but. Um, uh, I, I would say the thing that I am most excited about uh, by far, I don't know if this co- is, is controversial. Uh, I, I hate <laughs> curved screens. I hate. Oh curved yeah. Screens. No, I don't like them either. Thank God. Okay. Uh, some people like them and, and I don't, I think most of us journals don't. I think I, everyone I've talked to at like trade shows or anything has finally, they're, they're all like, yeah, no, none of us. I, I no. ran into a couple people, but for the most part. So yeah. So, so that would be the big change. Um, the, the pixel eight pro leaked first this week and then and then the the eight followed up uh a, about a day later and um yeah we're looking at a a phone that looks fairly similar it's it's like a more rounded pixel uh 7 pro wow i'm gonna mess up all these numbers uh it's like a more <laughs> rounded pixel 7 pro uh with a flat screen which is like i i if you go back and read my uh initial hands-on with the pixel 7 pro on its announcement day like that mm-hmm. was my biggest thing i was like just they they've already dialed back the curve just just make it flat 
and and it'll be Get more it comfortable with. to hold. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And it looks like uh, they read it. It's it's uh, they read my hands on, and they were like, "Will says we have to make the screen flat." And they and listened Will to me. knows best. <laughs> um, and I'll take full credit for it. But <laughs> no, yeah, it's... you should. Look, I, I'm with you. I'm as long as the bezels are really thin, because I feel yeah. like, you know, the seven. The eight, of course, the A phones. I'm not worried, and I'm not surprised that they have large, large, like larger bezels. Yeah. But the other ones, I'm, I'm feeling like, you know, they're a little too thick to my, for my liking. So the, if it's the Pro, at least I'm expecting it to be, you know, Galaxy S series thin, like, you know, because that's, or you know, that's kind of what we expect for that kind of money or right. that kind of status level of flagshipness yeah. um because they're not that expensive so the money is not usually the issue but um yeah it kind of makes me wonder what they're going to do with the a to differentiate from the 7a um because huh, tough one the yeah. other thing that i'm curious about is this more rounded design i don't yeah. actually like that i like the fact that the 7 pro and the, the 6 pro were so so rectangular that they're all so rectangular up to now yeah i right? agree yeah. Yeah, no, so, I I am um, I am a big fan of like uh the the S23 Ultra design over like yeah, yeah, the, exactly. the S23. That, yeah, it's, like, it's just I like that squared off the squared off edges. It's it looks sharp both it, it I guess it kind of is literally, but it looks like it's good looking. Like it looks like very, I don't know, businessy modern. but in a good way. Yeah, yeah, modern like like it's not it's here for like to get work done, you know? And I like that. It's like every little bit of screen counts you know what i'm saying yes exactly we're not cutting corners literally we're not cutting <laughs> corners uh so that's got me a little mm, kind of oh, i'm not too sure about that but yeah. you know what it's a pixel i'll probably rock it like i rock all the pixels yeah um although then i might have to have to work, decide whether i want to use the fold as my main or the 8 pro as my main hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's going to be a challenge one. this year because I I oh God I I I have so many phones. I mean I mean so do you, but <laughs> I, I just in front of me like six in front of me right now. There's you know it's 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 a challenge to be like what what is your and the answer is like I'm never I'm never on a daily driver for more than a couple of weeks at a time unless I'm doing I know some kind that's of extended kind of review, like but, that's yeah. why I've I years ago I did that and one day I finally decided you know I'm gonna have a, a daily driver that's gonna stick with me for a year or two at a time. And like right now it's a, you know, Pixel 7 Pro. Yeah. But, you know, uh, it's mostly been Pixels and Nexus phones. Yeah. And I had an Oppo Find, what did, which one was it? The X3 Pro, I think for okay. a little bit. I had a OnePlus 8 Pro for a little bit, but that was kind of the exception because back yeah. then the, the Pixels sucked. I mean, they didn't <laughs> suck, but they were mid-rangers. Like the Pixel 5 yeah. was a great phone, but it was a mid-range phone. It was also exactly. small and I wanted a larger phone and I wanted wireless charging. So I was just like, oh, I don't want to go down to a Pixel 4a, 5G, and I don't yeah. want to, you know, whatever it was at the time. Yeah. No, so, I, I'm the same way. All all Pixels basically since the since the two other than, you know, once I started reviewing a lot of phones for Android, please. But, but yeah, I've, <laughs> that's basically been it. Yeah. The OnePlus 8 Pro that I had for a while was because it's the first phone from OnePlus that had, you know, wireless charging. I mean, right. the, I think the 8 does, did as well, but it's just, I wanted the Pro. And so I was like, okay, I can now justify rocking a OnePlus phone, you know? Right. And, and damn it, they removed it from the 11. <laughs> like what were they thinking? I, you definitely <sighs> use wireless charging more than I do because I, I was not I as I use it upset. in cars because, you know, I review yeah. cars and stuff. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's fair. I don't know. That's fair. It, it's, it's like I feel like when you put Pro or you, when you call a phone your flagship for the year, yeah. it's got to have wireless charging. And if yeah. you don't have it, it's not a flagship. I'm sorry, guys. Like, you, you it, it's like some people are not going to use some of the features. That's – yeah. The whole point of a flagship, it's like everything yeah. in the kitchen sink. Like, I know tons of people who have an S22 Ultra or an S23 Ultra that don't use the S Pen, I, myself I'm included. I'm one of them. I was literally, that's what I thought of when you said that. I was like, I don't touch the S Pen in, in my phone Still, at all. it's a phenomenal phone. And yes. if I didn't hate Samsung software as much as I do, <laughs> I don't hate it terribly. But if I didn't dislike it as much as yeah. I do, I probably would be rocking that as my main, you know, my main phone. But no, um, I just, all the little things on the Pixel. It's like the, you know, the yeah. 
hold for me and all that other stuff. I just can't do without it. No, you know? I feel the same way. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm literally my backup record right now is a uh, is is a uh, on a Pixel Seven. Of course, it is. The yes. voice recorder app is so good. It's it is so, so good. good. So good. Yeah. All right. So you also had to cover another phone. Speaking of Samsung, this week the A54 is finally out officially. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Tell us got, about it. We've this phone has been. I feel like leaking for like five months or something. It's been. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm I'm so happy that it's like it's it's out and people. But now know you have to it. review it. No. I do. Yeah. I literally just talked no. uh, talked to my boss about it today. I was like, I was like, am I reviewing that? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay. I figured. Can you phone right. it out to some intern or something? <laughs> no. It's this is an important one for us. It's 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 <sighs> such it's a popular. True. You know, it it's not a flagship, obviously, but it's such a popular phone, especially. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. I I mean, I have a I have a friend who um you know this was a couple years ago now, but but he was like, I I need a new phone. Uh, he was he was still on an S seven. Uh, and he was like, I need a new phone. I have $500. And he got an A52 and was like really happy with it. And so like the, the A series and really the A50 series, like in the U S people, people really like these phones. No, get it. I get it. For yeah, sure. But it's, it's, it's the price. So, so yeah, it's, it's a really similar phone to the A53, to be honest, there's, there's a few changes. Um, they, they bumped the processor up to, uh, an Exynos 1380 from a 1280. It, it's not a huge leap it's 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 a different architecture it's a four by four architecture rather than two by six uh but you know it it should you know it's not going to be a a performance like beast or anything like that but it it should be good enough for regular navigation texting etc uh yeah yeah yeah. uh they gave it uh uh the screen is a little smaller it's a 6.4 inch uh full hd uh amoled screen at 120 hertz uh, rather than a 6.4 five on the a50 oh that's a minor difference yeah it's real it's real small um they've adopted the camera island like no bump yeah, the style design from the s23 yes. i saw yeah that. which every samsung phone is like adopting like like down to the a14 right like it has the same you know no uh <laughs> no camera bump uh which which you know it's it's lacking a little something for me uh, on every it's phone. Plain, except for, right? It is plain. It's it's. I don't know. I I know why they're doing it, but yeah, I I liked the the bump, uh, especially in the S series where it would it melded into the frame. I liked that. I don't know. It was unique. It was you yeah. could tell it was a Samsung phone. Whereas now exactly. you're like, if you at least if you're not in North America, you'll be like, oh, this could be an Oppo or something. You know, like you exactly. don't know. Yeah. And then otherwise it's, it's, um, it's fairly similar. You know, there's a 50 megapixel main sensor. There's an ultra wide and a macro, uh, uh sensor on it. They're not going to be anything to write home about. I actually don't have the, the macro Sam- Samsung's- though, based on the specs might have autofocus, which might save yeah. it because it's a five megapixel. Most of those two megapixel ones are real crap. They're real bad. Yeah. But I've seen some five megapixels like the Xiaomi. 12 pro last year had one was it 12 pro or the 12 light i can't remember one of those two and you know there's been a few phones that have had like from moto as well with a five megapixel autofocus yeah. macro which is you know nice but the other thing i was wondering like do you know if i haven't been following the a's as much do you know if they have wireless charging on these phones probably not right I, I, as far as I know, the answer is no. Uh, uh, Do I, they have I, OIS on the camera though? I think that's been on and off depending on the model. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's the, the spec list that Samsung sent me, to be honest, was With very super bare bones. Yes. Yeah. And so it's like, it's they don't difficult want to talk for me to specs. know. No, they don't. Especially on these A series. They're, they're really just like, well, it's got a battery. In it's it. a phone. <laughs> it's got a, it's got a camera. You don't It'll need to know work. what kind of camera. Yeah, which is which is frustrating, but um, yeah, as far as I know, uh, it's only wired charging. Twenty five watt wired charging is what I'm Ooh, seeing. Ooh man! So yeah, yeah, and you it's gonna talk- have a Samsung radio, so five G performance <sighs> yeah. is gonna suck. Yeah, it's not gonna be good. I, I, the um, I mean, we're talking about the One Plus Eleven and and no wireless charging, but like, I went from that phone because the reviews were back to back. So I went from the One Plus Eleven to the the S twenty three Ultra, and it was like. Night and day. giving up the fast charging was so yeah, painful i know the, the I know. It, it, it really changes how like because because i'm so used to using pixels and and samsung phones so I, i'm like 
oh, like, you know, basically 25 watt charging unless you have a really specific charger is is standard. And it's like you go to a OnePlus 11 or similar phone and it's like, oh, it fully charges in 30 minutes. Like yeah. I timed it for the review it was 33 minutes. And it's like from zero to 100. It's like it changes how you use the phone legitimately. And it's for I sure. Just yeah. wish, I just wish maybe not on the A series, but on the S series and the Z series and the Pixel phones. That yeah, it does have to happen. Up. Yeah. You know, and it's it's weird because like it's like it's like wireless charging. Like you might yeah. not use it, but it's there. Exactly. Like you can still use PD if you want to. I'll be honest, I charge most of my phones, even the one that are fast yeah. charging, with PD because I have them all over the house, the charger. Exactly. But but it's nice to have the charger. I have the option. And you know, I currently have the uh, Realme GT3 240 watt. Yeah. That thing is insane. Yeah. Like I've charged it three times since I got it at MWC. Yeah. And I, first of all, haven't managed to get it down below about 40%. And I literally plug it in for less than five minutes and I'm back at a hundred. Yeah. They, I was at the <laughs> the press conference <laughs> where crazy. they announced it and they literally charged it, it to, I think 20% in, in 80 seconds on stage, which is correct. Like, if yeah. you're going to give a yeah. demo, it's an impressive demo. <laughs> it's insane. And, yeah. and you know, you're like, I don't know. It's like it's it becomes irrelevant. Yeah, how it does. long it takes to charge at that point? Exactly. It's like you basically forget it's charging and it's done. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you go to the bathroom, you shower, you're done. You <laughs> make is, a coffee, you come back, you're exactly. done. Exactly. That's what you, I want. Whatever it is, like it's <laughs> yeah, it's it's a different it's a different world. But these A series have been yeah. pretty popular, and they're it's nice to have a more affordable option. Yeah. And um, yeah, I, I rarely get my hands on them. Somehow Samsung doesn't send them to me. And so, um, I've, you know, the closest I've come to using one is the fan edition S series. Right. Um, but I like them. I think, uh, it's a little weird to me that they're using Exynos on these, but yeah. you know. Yeah, no, I, I had the same thought of like, you'd think like a, a, a six series Snapdragon maybe, or, or. Uh, or even uh, seven Gen chip. one or yeah. seven seven eight G or yeah exactly yeah. it's it's odd or six that what about a six Gen one that brand new one exactly well I mean exactly it's not just really a, new relatively it came out in just September knows. yeah um I don't know it's odd but but yeah no uh, Exynos thirteen eighty um you know but but uh what six gigabytes of RAM one hundred twenty eight gigabytes of storage it's not terrible big does 5, it have micro SD it does, yeah, up to a terabyte, Ooh, which is perfect. A lot of so people can be happy about that. Yeah, exactly. Um, no headphone jack, unfortunately. They ditched that well, with, the, with the A53. So. Oh, the A53 did have a headphone jack? I didn't no, know that. No, A52 was the was the. Uh, okay, the that's last the last one, one yeah. 52. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. But um, but still, 450 bucks, which is pretty good for for these specs. Um, it's a it's a good Pixel, you know, 6A slash 7A alternative. Alternative, yeah. Yeah. So you saw all the brouhaha about the moon, <laughs> yes. the Samsung this week, Moongate, yes, as I like to call it. Some people, too, <laughs> other, I'm not the only one, I'm sure. Look, this has been coming up. This came up with Huawei back in the day, where it looks like they were using a texture, and now it's come up again with Samsung for the second time. And I don't understand what the brouhaha is all about. Like, yeah. To me, this is AI at work. This is you. This is not applying a texture. This is applying a AI algorithm that sees an input and knows what the output's supposed to look like and makes right. it happen. Right. And it's this, it's like it's extreme computational photography. It's like sharpening to an incredibly high degree. And so what? You know. And the, the other thing is, somebody pointed this out on Twitter, and I thought it was brilliant because. It's like people think they can take a photo of the moon with an iPhone, but they can. Yeah. Like all you need is to get a camera app like Halide or something that has manual controls. And, you know, you, you lower the shutter speed so that you get a faster shutter. And now you're, you're going to get a picture of the moon. Like, yeah. you know, of course, you can only go so far with the zoom on the iPhone because it doesn't have quite the same zoom as a S23 Ultra. But you can still get some really lovely moonshots if you want. Yeah. And you can on any phone, And uh, but the Galaxy gives you an extra little bit of help through yeah. AI. So what? Like, that's well, kind of my whole thing. I could not have said it better myself. This has been my take on it all week. 
including, you know, even beyond the fact that, like, like you said, this is not even news. Like this, this has come up at, at least once. Like there was at least one other Reddit post from like two years ago. That it was from the S21 the Ultra. Yeah, exactly. And it's like, this isn't, why is this blowing up suddenly? Like we've known this, but also it, it's, they're not, like you said, they're not fake. It's an input. It's an AI model. It's an output. Um, Samsung published a huge response uh, to this that is basically a clarification uh, this week uh, that you can you can go read. But it's it's I don't know what the difference is between like what what you know all, other than the fact that it's maybe a more extreme version. But like uh, like all of the pixel tricks or even the stuff that Apple's doing in the iPhone. Like to be yeah. honest, you know. The segmentation stuff where they divide exactly. up the, the, the trees in the background from the exactly. face, from the gr- dirt, from the sky, and they segment the photo and they apply different AI on each of them. That, that's a thing. Like, exactly. Sensor fusion is a thing. Uh, yes. Huawei was the first to really do it. Honor's doing it on the Magic series since the, f- the, the Magic 4 Pro last year and 5 Pro this year. Oppo's been doing it on the Fine series since I think the Fine X3. So they're doing sense of fusion. That's why their telephoto is only 2X with no OIS because you can get some actually really good results up to 5X on these phones. Like, and I'm going to recite a bunch of phones here. Uh, OnePlus 11, um, Oppo Fine N2, non-flip, the the book one that is only China. Uh, The... the three, the three and the five the, of the X series, uh, Find X five Pro and five X three Pro. All of these have essentially just a two megapixel portrait non OIS lens at like thirteen megapixel or something, and they take incredible v- v- zoom shot up to five X because they do sensor fusion between that massive fifty megapixel sensor and that two X telephoto. That's how exactly. it works, guys. This is this is a real thing that's happening. And honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if you know we, we start seeing that more with Google and Apple soon too, because and and Samsung because they're not doing as much fusion yet. But that's the future. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. And and I and I want that. Like I want you know the the if I if I wanted to take, you know, not to be dismissive, I guess, but like if I want to take like really natural looking photos, I will grab my DSLR and it's fine, and I will I will you know take a manual shot with a real not real, but you know what you, I mean. You, like, you're not gonna full... go get a film camera. <laughs> I know I'm a <laughs> fake photographer. <laughs> um, no, I'm, I'm not. I mean, I'm a, I'm. I wouldn't say I'm a terrible photographer, but I'm not, I'm not very good. <laughs> um, you know, I, I went to school for, for video production and, and, uh, even then it was like, oh, well, he's a, he's a great editor. He's an okay, uh, <laughs> you know, DP, like he'll, he can shoot. Okay. If you want him to edit something, he can do that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's, that's just been the story of my life, but, and it, it doubles down. And now to look at you. Now well. you edit other people too. That's, that's exactly right. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I, I, I like the fact that like, you know, the the phone, whatever phone at that time that is in my pocket is usually like smarter than if I was just carrying a DSLR and it can optimize, you know, anything I'm taking. And maybe that's not quote unquote, like the Real most realistic. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But like, I, I'd rather have like, I mean, if we're talking moon, like, would I rather have a usable shot of what the moon looked like on a clear summer sky, right? Like, or would I rather have like a blurry, like white globe that I can't make out what it is? Like, I, I want the former. Like, I want to see the memory of how it is in my head. Like, that's what I want photos for. And so I don't yeah. fully understand the like outrage over this because this is just a slightly, it it's a more extreme version of what your phone is already doing with every single photo Anything you take. Else? I mean, down yeah. to, down to beauty filters on on oh you know. my god yeah some of the yeah. chinese phones is like exactly. narrowing your eyes and making your chin pointier and, exactly you know yeah and and you know i also want to add you know talking about halide again the the app on ios which is a really great app by the way folks if you have an iphone you want a bit more control in your camera check it out but i was really pissed with them on you know, Twitter for like fanning the fires and making such a big fuss about this moon gate. And, and, you know, I'm like, come on guys, like you're not helping. And I don't see how you benefit here. Like you're an iOS app 
a lot of people respect what you do and now you're crapping on you know the competition like that it's just not cool yeah and then these other people are saying well who takes photos of the moon anyway like and i'm like yeah like by that reasoning who takes photos of whatever anyway like you know what i'm saying like we take photos for me i take photos because i like to take the time to kind of see the shot before yeah. i take it and like you know frame it right and you know the the contrast and the colors and the lighting and the 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 composition all these things my brain kind of somehow does really well and i enjoy the art of it and regardless of whether i'm using you know a film camera or a dslr or yeah. like a mirrorless or a phone and it's like i enjoy the process and yes i can grab a stock photo of the moon anytime i want but that's not the point like yeah you yeah. know i don't get people like it's just it's interesting how it's been such a virulent touchy subject for so many folks yeah they, they got so mad about it and i'm like why <laughs> like, i I don't know. I really wish I understood, but yeah, I, I, you know, we were talking about it in, you know, the, the virtual, you know, Slack newsroom at, at AP this week. And, I, and it was like, does anyone have like, like takes on this? And I was like, yeah, my yeah. take is like, why, why is this, <laughs> why is everyone mad? Exactly. I, I, I just didn't get it. Yeah. Neither did I. But anyway, you know, I, I wanted to bring this up so that I just tell you my take listeners yeah. right i want you to know how i feel because i think this is just ridiculous and blown out of proportion yeah. and yes i'm kind of fanning the fire by discussing it but at the same time i just think you should you know think about it in a in a in a clever way like be be smart about this this is just computational photography there's no yeah. there's no deception here <laughs> there's no you know and and here's the thing you have to understand if that algorithm wasn't in the galaxy phone you would still be able to take a really good photo of the moon with that phone because it has manual control and incredibly yeah. good OIS and incredibly strong telephoto lenses. It might not be quite as sharp, but the biggest thing this algorithm lets you do is point the phone at the moon and get a photo of the moon without having to adjust anything. Exactly. That's, that's, the, that's the magic. It's not really that you can't do that with that phone. You can without that algorithm. Exactly. It's got enough glass or whatever, like yeah. magnification, and it certainly has got enough manual control on the sensors to do it. So, you know, anyway, shall we move on to the nothing year two leaks? Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think of that? I, my biggest thing, I can't, I can't believe that the nothing year one is, is almost two years old. That was actually the biggest take. I was oh, like, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Those came out last year. Right. And I was like, no, no, they didn't. They came out in, in 2021 and I had completely COVID forgotten. has messed up our sense it of time. It really has. Um, no, I just, I was like, I was like, yeah, you know, annual release. It's like, no, like technically like, uh, it was the, the, oh God, the, the stick, right. Was the, was the, yeah, other, we got other, the stick yeah. last summer. Yeah, exactly. And so they released that instead of a, an ear two. And so that's what we're getting now. But yeah, they look, I, I, I mean, it, so it's like leaked, uh, you know, ads basically or product yeah yeah, uh, right. yeah and and um marketing renders that's the phrase i'm looking for um yeah. they they look uh they look pretty similar to me at least as far as i can tell they're pretty far away in these renders because they're in models ears or whatever but um yeah i i i am happy that nothing is still here basically like i yeah. you know they that's, threw a great party for us. That's why I'm they happy. They threw a good party for us. That was a lot of fun. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, you're right. <laughs> that was a good time. I, yeah. we, I think I was there till they closed out uh, the bar, which is, you know, always that's that's how you know that you're doing it right. <laughs> Especially in Europe, it's like, what, what do you mean? It's six in the morning. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm really just happy. Or, happy and excited that that you know in addition to these like n this isn't really news or anything but like i'm very excited for the nothing phone too especially with like it oh getting yeah. A US release. yeah oh yeah absolutely we talked yeah. about last week with that yeah. confirmation of the processor um yeah but look for me the ear ones are a one of my not favorite but preferred earbuds okay. like okay. i i think they had some connectivity issues that got resolved with software updates eventually and so that okay. got them off to a bit of a bad start but 
they sound very neutral. I'm like one of those people who likes that, you know, Harmon curve kind of sound, like recording yeah. studio professional, not overbearing bass, very, very flat and balanced EQ. Um, and uh, these do that out of the box. You don't have to EQ yeah. them to my taste. So some people might not find them ba bassy enough because they're used to bassy headphones and earbuds. Uh, they have decent ANC. It's not outstanding, but it does the job. And they look cool and the case is cool and they it have wireless so charging cool. <laughs> and they have, you know, they they have everything you need. And at the time when they came out, they were $99. Yeah. And they've gone up in price because now the, the stick are $99 and they don't have ANC and they don't have wireless charging, but they're super funky with that cool rotating uh, uh, case. But it's interesting, yeah. you know, because if these ear twos are kind of like similar in design, but improved in every other way, I'm thinking the same as the, the, the AirPods Pro 2, you know, which are... Yeah basically just look almost the same and are much better, much better and see, you know, all the features in the case for finding, locating it and stuff. I think this will be a great thing and hopefully they can keep them at 129 or maybe 149, which I think is still very competitive. I have not, uh, I've not used the, the nothing ear one and you have, you have kind of, I've been looking for new earbuds and you've kind of sold me on, on considering the ear two when they're, when they're announced. Cause I'm, I, the design is so cool and and yeah i don't know i i'm i'm down to take a a, a chance i i'm usually or i have been in the past a, a jabra uh diehard for my for my earbuds but i'm i'm down to take a chance on something a little more unique yeah and i think you know um they probably won't have the growing pains they had with the software for the first one yeah you know, exactly like, because honestly, the the stick, which I also have, are rock solid in terms of software. They just worked okay. as they should. Nothing's wrong, nothing weird. Everything's fine. They sound also just really good, really neutral. No ANC though. So, you know, and they're they're more like original AirPods. They just sit in the ear canal, the entrance of the ear canal. So they don't have uh, a silicone tip that goes inside your ear. So they're not um, not even passively uh, noise insulating, right? Like, and if you shake your okay. head too much, you'll probably lose them. So, you know, it's a different, completely different design, Yeah, but it does have that same cool transparency to them and stuff. So yeah, if you get a chance to get a pair, you know, I would say, yeah. you know, ping their PR team, see if you can get two pairs and have one of you review it. Another yeah. one, write an opinion piece or something, you know? Yeah, no, that's, that's a good idea. Cause I, I want to try these. These are cool. Yeah, no, especially, you know, now that you met everybody on the team. Yeah, that's true. Right. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to these. And it's good to know that they're working on other products than just the phone. And, and you know, uh, I'm actually surprised I did the stick. I was not expecting those at all. Like, yeah. I figured we'd get the phone, which we did. And then we'd get these ear twos. And then we'd yeah, get exactly. the phone too. And, yeah. But, yeah, in the middle, they kind of threw us for a bit of a loop there with the stick, which I thought was kind of cool. So yeah, T-Mobile's buying Mint Mobile. <laughs> and I want to say that's interesting because Mint Mobile is one of my sponsors. So I wonder how that's going to pan out. <laughs> but I'm also a T-Mobile customer. My main lines are on T-Mobile. I use yeah. Mint Mobile for my additional SIMs for devices that I want to review when they don't come with a SIM card. Yeah, And I've been very happy, as you know, from, uh, from the sponsorship. But what's your take on this? I'm a little bummed that we're losing an independent entity here, uh, even though it's a virtual yeah. operator. No, that's that's how I feel. It's just I, I, I don't know. I'm 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 acquisitioned out. I guess I every time <laughs> there's a new acquisition, I just kind of look at it with suspicion, and I'm like, this is not going to go well for for customers. Even even if it stays, you know, I know Mint is saying that <clears throat> their their pricing structure is going to stay in place. They're going to keep. Ryan Reynolds on as a as a spokesperson or as a you know to in their in their marketing which I think you know is 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 good for Mint because he is I certainly, mean he makes good ads for them he and does. he's a very he's a good marketer right in he, general he really is yeah he did such a good job at marketing you know Deadpool and stuff as well right exactly yeah so yeah so that all makes a lot of sense but yeah I just I get this feeling you know every time one of these happens in my gut where I'm like. Two years from now, though, two years from now, they're going to be like pricing is going up. And maybe yeah. maybe that would happen anyway. You know, we don't know. Like, yeah, if, but it's it's always I just I get such a bad feeling about it these days. I don't know. I just want to say kudos 
to Ryan Reynolds for investing 20 or 25% or whatever it was yeah. in the company when he did. And now he's, you know, making some money on this. And, and I have to say, you know, again, I'm not saying this because they're my sponsor. I'm actually a customer. Yeah. I like their service. It's great. The only thing that I is becoming more of an issue now that I live part of my time in Canada is that they don't have roaming. Right. So I can't reuse my mint mobile sims in Canada. They have it, but it's ex really expensive. It's not like the T-Mobile plans. Yeah, right? no, that's, yeah. I, as a, uh, my main sim is on Verizon and it's kind of the same yeah. thing where it's, uh, uh, because I live, so I, I, listeners don't know this. I live in Buffalo. The border is 20 minutes from my house. That's uh, right. My car. Yeah, so so like the, the ability to, uh, to have roaming that is either free or like very cheap it's very cheap on on verizon is uh is is crucial because i'm over there all the time literally i'm going there in a week and a half <laughs> yeah so yeah yeah so for me you know t-mobile gives me that uh and and i'm postpaid on them but for my you know other sims i like to just kind of like i use fi and I activate when i need them mostly to travel abroad because they support roaming and i really yeah. literally just activate my fi when I leave the country kind of thing. Um, and it's nice that you can pause the service. Yeah. But Mint is really nice for like my every day when I'm reviewing a phone and I don't want to take my main SIM out of my main phone, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I want T-Mobile compatibility. So it works pretty well. So yeah, let's see how this pans out. And uh, I'm hoping for know, the best. Yeah. yeah, me too. Absolutely. And another piece of news that I'm very excited about is this BlackBerry movie. Yeah, uh, the trailer came out this week. What's your take on this one? Um, I'm I'm really excited for this for like a couple reasons. Uh, uh, first of all, um, I think the cast is fun. So so for people who don't know or didn't see the trailer, it's uh, it's it's kind of it's kind of it's it's not a social network tone. It's more like uh, you know, it's more of a comedy. It's not like it's not like a spoof or anything. But like they're definitely like going at this from like the story of blackberry is a little right. at least third you know the fall of blackberry is a little silly in that like just how it happens and how hard they fumble specifically post iphone and with you know the storm and and phones like that it's it's oh man it, the it, storm yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> so I, I can't wait for the storm scene i really can't because you know it's gonna be good but it's i, I good. it's um it stars glenn howerton from it's always sunny it stars jay baruchel who's been in a bunch of you you've seen him he's in this is the end he's in man seeking woman yeah. he's around yeah. um um and then it's directed and also co-starring uh by a guy named matt johnson um who had a, a very, I don't know, I don't know, popular, yeah, I would say popular, a popular YouTube show in the 2000s, like a, a, a web show, and then um, kind of took that, and I believe had a, a network version of it on Vice, and then has made a couple other movies. He's like a alt comedy guy. Um, I like his stuff a lot, mm -hmm. so I'm like personally very excited for it, because I think he will have like the right tone for yeah, it. Yeah, he, he'll do it right, yeah, totally yeah. feel the same way as you there. Yeah, so yeah, so I, I can't wait to see this. I, yeah. I'm super excited. Do we know when it's coming out and where? Uh, May twelfth in theaters. I would assume it's an IFC release, so I would assume that it's a it's a limited release. So it, it'll take uh, a couple weeks, it, and then it'll probably hit digital quick too. Would be my guess. So you don't so. have to wait too long. Um, it it uh, premiered, I believe, at the Berlin Film Festival, and then aired at uh, South by this week. Yeah, South by uh, this week. And, yeah, and yeah, reviews are strong. For, for some reason, the Rotten Tomatoes uh, page went down after I published an article about it, but it was at a 95%. <laughs> it said an 83 on Metacritic. So, like, people like it. Like, the people, uh, critics who have seen it like it. So, I'm I'm very excited for it. Well, you and I will need to do a episode about film sometime. You sound like a <laughs> film person. Uh, I, I am a film person. We, You're we, film um, buff. Me too. Look at that. We can totally <laughs> have another sandwiches tangent, but with films this time. There we sometime go. Sometime on a future show. That was we did uh we did that for um for the Android Police podcast. It was just me and and Daniel Bader uh as our end of the year episode uh last year. We we just uh That's sat down awesome. and talked about movies for an hour. It was it was fun. Um but yeah, you know, I I I am I am very it was it was fun to uh to have, you know, to write a new story about this trailer because it was kind of my two passions of of uh smartphones and and movies. 
colliding. Yeah, so, no, I'm yeah. glad you 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 know that I saw it in your list of articles because like, yeah. oh yeah, I wanted to talk about that. <laughs> so perfect. Yeah, no, I'm I've I've been very excited for it since uh, since last summer when they announced it. So yeah, I'm really excited. Cool, cool. The last thing I really want to briefly talk about is yeah. about the Volkswagen I just saw in Germany. Volkswagen yeah. flew me out there to do a bunch of stuff, but one of the things was this ID2 reveal. It's they call it the ID2 all. Like the idea is, you know, to give an ID car, an electric yeah. car to all, to everyone. So that's the, the why it's called the two all. It it is technically the ID two because they have an ID three and a four, etc. So there are a line of electric cars called ID. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, it's uh, the first car that is being announced that really should be hitting the 25K mark or 25K euros in this case, which is like 26,000 US dollars yeah. and do so by 2025. Now it's a smaller car. It's uh, The interior is about the same space as a Golf. The exterior is about the dimensions of a Polo, which if, if you're in Europe, you know what it is. If you're in the US, it's smaller than a Golf. It's about nine inches smaller than a golf. But again, mm -hmm. EVs are very spacious because they're built from the ground up to be right. EVs. They have a flat floor, lots of storage. So I think this is a car that could come to North America, especially Canada. Yeah. But right now there's no plans to do that. So, you know, I wanted to bring it up because of a number of things. Number one, it's, you know, the first time we have an official announcement of a car that is an EV at this price point in a and it's coming soon and you can be sure it'll they'll hit the deadline because they're really gung-ho about this thing i talked to a bunch of execs when i was there i told them how i'd love to see this in north america especially the u.s and yeah. they were surprised and i'm like look at the feedback on my social media about people who are not my car enthusiast friends and who are saying oh this is awesome i want it so you know and the other thing is it um you know, kind of has that nostalgia vibe because it looks like a golf, right? Yeah. And it looks better than in any of the other ID vehicles other than the bus, the ID Buzz, which is the mini bus that they did, which was launched at South by last year. You know, and it's kind of like their their ID cars so far has been kind of boring. And this is great looking. Uh, the price is right. It's coming soon enough that it's not like too long in the future. And it's going to have, you know, a range of about 450 kilometers, which is about 280 miles. And that's not as much as a Tesla Model 3, but for the size of that car, that's perfectly fine. Yeah. And so, you know, honestly, I'm pretty excited. I did not expect to be quite as excited about this car. I like the design, even though it's a little familiar because it's more like an evolved golf but i think that works because their yeah. other evs are just too weird looking and too kind of too futuristic this is going to be very you know easy to like attainable in terms of not just price but people can relate to it because it looks like something familiar so all of this makes me pretty positive about it and since we cover evs in the show from time to time i thought what a better time than to discuss this. What What is your impressions? Have you looked at it at all? I'm I'm looking through the photos right now. Yeah, I think this looks great. My, I, my biggest thing about EVs, and, and I mean, this is not like a fresh take, but it's just like, I really think the only thing holding adoption back is is cost. It has nothing to do with people, you know, even in the US being like, oh, I just love like gasoline so much. Like, I really think <laughs> that like, like once even, you taste TVs, yeah, it's hard to exactly go back. like like my my dad um my dad works for GM like just a, he works at a GM factory and and even he is like excited about the idea you know uh, of of EVs you know he drives a a truck and tows his boat with it and all that stuff right but like he he's like I would get uh, like an EV truck but like you know first like the first EV trucks launching are like very expensive, expensive. yeah yep. like like you know, it, the price just has to be right on this stuff. And so cars, uh, cars like the ID2 all it, it's, that's what this market needs. You know, it's, it's so frustrating watching American car companies in particular launch, like essentially like a hundred thousand dollar, like Tesla rivals. And it's like, no, you are like hitting the <laughs> yeah. wrong, they're already served by Tesla. You should be hitting like the $40,000, you know, 30 to $40,000. Like I want, 
an SUV to go to the grocery store or I want like a, you know, a compact SUV or what, whatever. I, I know every American drives a big car, a bigger car than this at least, but you know, it, it is what it is, but that's the market that they need to hit. I think. Um, yeah. and, and the yeah, price point for see. sure. I exactly. know that Americans want something bigger. That's a CUV, but yeah, look, just, just hear me out for a second. Right. Because not you specifically will, but listeners and people out there in general. You know, nobody needs a CUV. Like, yeah. if you think you need a CUV because you have kids and you have a stroller and you have all this stuff, trust me, people did this just fine in a Volkswagen Golf back in the day, and they still do it just fine in Europe in a Volkswagen Golf. And this thing is going to be possibly bigger than a Golf inside. So you'll yeah. be fine. That's not the issue. The issue is, like, why don't you break from the mold of, you know, this doing the same as the Joneses next door, right? Like just, just look at getting a car for a change and, and have a fantastic experience driving it. And it's affordable. It's an EV. Like I think there is a market definitely for city dwellers in the U S for this because yeah. parking is hard when you don't have a driveway yeah. or a parking spot in a garage. And, you know, I live in San Francisco. I don't have parking here at my apartment. I park on the street. And so a small car is why they're popular in San Francisco because yeah. parking is hard. So, you know, you take all this into account and I think there's a market for it in the U.S. But I just think it, it takes a bit of a mindset. And the mindset is that, no, you do not need anything bigger than... Like, in my opinion, you don't need anything bigger than a Honda CRV or a RAV4. Yeah. Anything yeah. above that, you, maybe if you have a family of six or something, or, you know, a family of seven, or even, <laughs> like, that's a whole different story. But I'm trying, for yeah. the average family and yeah. average, you know, even married couple or couple with two kids or, or like couple without kids or one yeah. kid, like, I don't think you need anything more. And, and as such, I think you can also not need a CUV. I think you can yeah. do with a regular car that's going to be just as practical. Just give yeah. it a chance, you know, <laughs> but apparently people are not willing to do that based on what the market is showing. And I don't know. I feel like the manufacturers are incentivizing people to not buy cars and buy SUVs and CUVs. And I don't. Oh, get absolutely. It. Yeah, I I think the same. I mean, I mean, I mean, the choice, you know, for just like a standard like sedan, like you're you're so limited in the U.S. Sort of like you know compared to how many SUVs or or, or pickup you trucks see, you could buy. Yeah, I get that because sedans are not as practical as a CUV. No, but they're not. hatchbacks are as practical yeah. as a CUV, yeah. and this is a hatchback. Or station wagons, for that matter. I know they don't sound sexy, but <laughs> sedans with a long roof and uh, lots of space in the in the trunk and the yeah. in the back are a thing, and they are drive significantly better than any CUV or SUV. And you know, on top of that, they're more frugal. Yeah. Whether you sipping electrons or dino juice, <laughs> so you know, like, why? I don't get it. Like, people are weird. People are just. I think there's this. Treating cars as appliances mixed with, I don't want to do anything different from my neighbors going on. Yeah, that's definitely a big you know? part of it. Yeah, no, I <laughs> And agree. I'm like, come on, be different and, yeah. you know, have some joy in your life. You're going to have to drive somewhere. <laughs> Autonomy is not going to happen for quite a while yet. So, yeah. you know. Anyway, on that note... Will, do you want to tell folks where they can find you on the internet, your various social media handles, yeah. remind them where they can read your work, et cetera? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can find me at, at Android, please, just typing away most days. Um, I'm the phone's editor there, so, you know, phone-centric news, I'll be on top of that, and then reviews, rumors, anything like that. Um, I'm also on the Android, please podcast, which I'll be recording in, like, 12 hours and we're going to talk about the same topic. <laughs> so if you want to hear me touch on like 75% of what we just touched on here, but Miriam got it first. Miriam got my, my first taste. Yes. And, and Daniel and Ara are going to have to deal with the fact that it's just warmed over from today. So, so yeah, so you can find me there and then, and then I'll plug it since it, it came up. Uh, I also, um, last year did a three part podcast, uh, mini series on, um, rockstar biopics. So like not technology, but if you liked me briefly cool. talking about movies, um, I did kind of a, a history of the rockstar biopic. Uh, it's called Don't Explain. We went from Lady Sings the Blues to uh, Bohemian Rhapsody. So uh, three movies, an episode. 
each episode's about an hour, so you can power through it in an afternoon. It's it's three episodes. Um, find it wherever you listen to wherever you're listening to this, I guess. <laughs> awesome. Wow, yeah. I had no idea. That, I'm gonna go check that out. Well, that's great. Yeah. And my name on Twitter, it's it's just Will underscore Saddleberg. But uh I'm trying to use it less, so maybe don't follow me. <laughs> <laughs> That's not going to work because of what I'm about to tell them to do, which is discuss this podcast with the two of us on Twitter. (laughs) (laughs) Please do. I listen, I'm as addicted as anyone else. So I say that and then I will see all of your, uh, all of your replies. Great. And folks, you know where to find me on the internet. I'm a tank girl. That's T N K G R L. Like the comic book character, just drop all the vowels. And that's my handle on Twitter, my handle on Instagram as well. So if you want to discuss the show with me and will, as I mentioned, Find us on Twitter for better or worse. <laughs> and then uh, Instagram is where you'll find pretty pictures of phones, cars, food, travel, all kinds of things taken with phones because that's how I roll. And uh, of course, uh, the podcast lives at mobiletechpodcast.com. We're on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, everywhere good podcasts can be found. So please subscribe, tell your friends. If your app lets you review or rate the show, please consider doing that. That would really help. There is a couple of YouTube channels you can subscribe to that have some visual content to go alongside the podcast. YouTube.com slash mobile tech podcast and YouTube.com slash mobile tech more. The first one is phones and immediate peripherals. And the second one is all of the meta stuff around it. Cars, travel tech, home automation, all that good stuff. So subscribe, like, you know how YouTube works. Tell your friends, comment, click the little bell, all that good stuff. And uh, if you really want to help in a meaningful and significant way, there's a Patreon. Uh, Your financial help is always welcome. So Patreon, I've got a few perks there for you. There's a video version of this podcast that comes out a day before the public audio version. You get to watch me and my guests chit chat. And sometimes I leave some bloopers in there and little surprises. (laughs) So it's a lot of fun. So consider the Patreon. There's also a Discord server you can join as one of the tiers. There's a bunch of other stuff there. Check it out. Patreon.com slash tankgirl. That's patreon.com slash TNKGRL. If you don't like Patreon and you want to help financially in a different way, I get it. There is a PayPal link in the show notes. Just click through the link and make a donation. You know I love my coffee. But yeah, uh, help out any way you can and appreciate it. And I want to thank our sponsor, Mint Mobile. So as you know, I'm constantly reviewing multiple phones. And while that's fun, it also means I'm constantly spending a lot of money for wireless service on multiple SIMs. That's where Mint Mobile comes in. And that's who I'm partnering with for today's podcast. If you also want to save money on your wireless service, switch to Mint Mobile. As tech-savvy early adopters, you've probably heard of Mint Mobile before, but let me quickly tell you how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless for as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out the retail stores and salespeople. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? In my experience testing phones, Mint Mobile delivers the same data speeds and call quality as the big three for a fraction of the cost. Switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their eSIMs, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. No more standing around and waiting in line at a big wireless store. You can keep your current device and phone number and easily switch services. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, Mint will ship you a new SIM free of charge. All Mint Mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, lightning fast 5G, and free mobile hotspot. Mint will show you how much data you use each month and recommend plans that save you money. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. Use my link mintmobile.com slash mobile tech to get premium wireless starting for $15 a month. That's mintmobile.com slash mobile tech. Stop paying more than you need on your wireless bill and start saving big with Mint Mobile. And I want to thank you, Will, for being my guest this week. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you, Miriam. I listened to you way back on the Engadget uh, mobile podcast. So like, oh, it is cool wow. to actually be on the show with you. It's great. Fantastic. Well, I really enjoyed it. We'll definitely have you on in the future. And folks, we'll have another show next week. So stay tuned for that. Until then, 
Cheers, everybody. This has been the Mobile Tech Podcast with Tank Girl, proudly presented by worldpodcasts.com. You can visit us online at mobiletechpodcast.com.